So, in today's tutorial, I want to speak about grading because I don't feel like people really speak about that. And I have quite a strict process with grading. I tend not to overdo it. I don't really do it that much. I just kind of flicker in the octane camera and then after that, it's maybe minimal in the metric color in After Effects. So, outside of that, just gonna mull over it. Make sure you're not overgrading your renders because that's something beginners tend to do quite a lot and you don't want to be overgrading. You don't want to be doing that. So we're going to go over that. But before we get into the tutorial, check out my self I store. Tons of assets on there. Might be some LUTs on there for you. Just saying. I've also started a new podcast with Axis, if you know him, um, called The Generalist. We're discussing everything 3D from um, 3D to uh, burnout and all sorts of stuff. So go check that out. Episodes every Friday. First episode's up slow burn but we're waiting for it to catch attention and without further ado let's uh let's get grading yeah okay so what i want to go over today is just kind of my grading process and how it's kind of a multi-step trail through my workflow i think when you're starting out you generally have this process of starting out uh, with your pictures like this and you'll render them out like this without any kind of effects in cinema or in your octane camera and then that makes grading a lot harder for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend a bit of time in the imager and then we'll jump over to after effects because that's where I do all my grading and lumetri color. So if we turn on our imager, I want to assume most of you are familiar with everything here but I'm also going to respect the fact that a lot of you might not be. The first thing I'm always going to tell you to do with your renders is to mess with these two sliders and flatten out your image like this. And you can see just like that, the image looks so much better. And we can even bring up our saturation a bit. <laughs> it's like it's graded already. And the reason we do this is because if you're shooting in real life, a lot of photographers or cinematographers will use log profiles to flatten out their image because then it makes it way easier to grade. And so essentially that's what you're doing here. Now in the 3D world, we're really lucky. We can turn off specific lights. We can alter things. You can do that in the real world, but not to the extent we can. We can just manipulate everything. And of course, in real life, if you're outside, you can't just change the sunlight or the direction of it or the power of it. But typically I would say flatten your image in your imager and in your camera because there's a much more universal way of doing it and then at least if you do end up with a blown out light you know it's because the light is really blown out and not just because your exposure is on a really sensitive level all the way up at 1.0 or something so just keep your image nice and flat and safe your response generally ignore any of these besides srgb and linear or maybe these two here linear all you're really going to have to do is generally if this was on srgb it would be one and one but you're just going to have to um or sorry one and 2.2 and then you would just keep the um, values a little bit higher to get the same result um, but it's nothing really that different it's personal preference i tend to use srgb now what i'm going to go over next is using a lot but quickly before i do that i will touch on post-processing it's not really grading but I think the general rule of thumb with grades is you want it to look like there isn't a grade there. You want it. You don't want people to think about the grade as they're looking at the image and you don't want them to be able to dissect your process with it. And if you use all these parameters and values and tricks and, and blooms and vignettes and contrasts and exposures and lens distortions, people are going to notice that. And you generally want people to see one composed image. You don't want them to see a process. And I think as artists, we can generally do that. We can look at an image and be like, too much bloom, too much contrast, you know? So you don't want, you don't want people to think about that stuff. So, you know, bloom enough that it's there and it's present, but enough that it melts into the image and doesn't take over it. And of course, these amounts are completely subjective and very render to render. But lifted shadows here is a lot that I've made and I've been working on a lot pack for a while, but I want it to be um very tailored towards renders so i'm making it off of renders and i want them to be every lot to be meaningful and have a purpose and i want you to be able to pick them carefully between each render 
rather than just making a bunch of grades and then milking out uh, 70 LUTs in a pack or something. So I'm taking my time with it. Now, what this does is exactly what it says it does, and it lifts the shadows. Now, you're not seeing it too much in this render right now, and that's where we end up at order. And what you can do here is realign what Octane sees first and deems as most important. So in this case, I would go LUT response gamma, and my LUT's gonna kinda take over the image, and I would just kinda put it on a pretty low value. And then at that point, I can bring in some of my contrast again, and bring up the LUT. And this alone could be a grade, you could leave it here, and quite often I do this. But what we will do from here is take this into After Effects so I can show you your way around my grading process there and hopefully get you on a more professional trajectory with with grading in after effects um because i think a lot of you um you know you're not going to be doing this like crazy professional grading and these like massive softwares you're probably just going to be using after effects or photoshop or you might not be doing any of that you might just want to do it in the camera here and leave it and that's entirely possible but i would maybe put up my uh, saturation a little bit and uh, then what I would do is leave it and export it. So what we're gonna do is just take what we've got here. As you can see, that was the before and that was the after. Definitely a form of a grade. And uh, I'm just gonna pop into After Effects. Now I've got the render here and drag it here and create a new comp from it. Now this is my initial render out of Cinema and it was a little bit different. I used a different lot and I had it a little bit more saturated which I just tried to copy here is maybe something a bit more like this. But if you do Control alt y create an adjustment layer, call it Grade, and then Control space if you've got the Effects Console, and we'll do Lumetri Color. And I'll show you your way around here. So if you open up these two drop downs, we've got Input LUT and Look. Now, generally, I tend to go for Look, and that's because we have this intensity here, and we can mess with the intensity, and you can't do that in the Input LUT. So I'll pop uh, lifted shadows back in and you can see it doing its thing there and uh, I wouldn't maybe I would maybe I wouldn't pop it in if I did render this out with lifted shadows on but uh, I haven't so I would maybe just bring that up and get the shadows coming up and generally my little kind of visual cue and my style and feel free to do this if you want I'm all for people taking inspiration from me um, there's nothing about uh, my art that's off limits is I bring my shadows up. I love to bring them up. You can do that in the curves here as well. You can just pop in a, a, a point here and then bring it up in the corner. I don't like to overdo it though. So I tend to not go over the top. You did see me bring up the vibrance then. That is something I tend to do as well. And generally here in Lumetri Color, you're seeing your common grading values, your exposure, something I would bring down. Would maybe try and get a bit more contrast in there bring up our highlights, bring up our shadows, and uh, you can see the whites here as well, maybe bring them down a little bit. And I would just kind of get a relatively flat image. That's kind of why I like things. I like things faded off and looking good. I'll maybe bring up the exposure a little bit. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you down and depending on the version of, sorry, we're gonna stay in curves. Um, depending on the version of After Effects that you're in will depend on how these will look. In older versions, they could look like wheels. But essentially what these do is you select specific parts of your image with these droppers and uh, you can then alter very precisely colors and the brightness and luminosity of those specific parts of the image. So for example, you can hue your image in a really direct manner that's kind of listening to your image a lot more than just changing a hue value would. And that's because you can do things like drown out every single color in the image, but leave the red. Or drown out every single color, but leave the blue. So if I'm to select down here, what I can do is then bring that up and oversaturate the shadows while keeping the rest of the image and the highlights down. And that is what I did in the original image, just to get that really hot kind of orange in the bottom. And if you're using Octane a lot, you know how dodgy this kind of temperature and lights can get, and it can get very noisy and very absorbed, and it doesn't look good. Um, so to be able to do that here is very handy, and you can see if I bring that up, they'll do the highlights too. But it's a way to get this level of saturation right here and nowhere else, because if we were to bring this up, look what happens. 
so it's very precise and it's uh, definitely a handy piece of equipment and uh, something I use in just about all my renders and what I will do is show you around the rest of them so I just want to show you the values that I commonly use here now if you look at the hue versus hue and for example we grab down here and we grab a red you can just kind of faintly change the color now you're only seeing one color in the image here but if you had a lot of colors you would just be changing the color of the color you've selected because you can see I'm only moving the red so what I would be doing in an image with a lot of colors on show here is only changing the red so if you're rem if you're doing something right now you would be noticing that so you can and you can see it's much more precise it listens to you a lot more I could ever so faintly change this to different colors or I could go really crazy with it um, but it looks natural and it looks real and it's uh, and it's a very useful value which I use a lot and there's been a lot of renders that I've done which I've completely warped the colors of and uh, no one's ever blinked that it was red when I rendered it out and then blue <laughs> after. Uh, the other ones aren't really something I use too much. If we grab the red here, what you can see here in saturation versus saturation is you can just kind of desaturate your shadows or your highlights. Um, so again, yeah, not something I really use too much. So we could like bring down the saturation on our highlights, believe the saturation in our shadows. And that's something that's pretty cool to do. Or we can do it the other way around, bring it into our highlights and bring it out of our shadows. And then you get a nice kind of fade into your saturation from your shadows. So your highlights where the light's hitting is all saturated and uh, your shadows are all kind of dirty and grungy. And uh, it's, it takes a little bit of fiddling with to do without hypersaturating your image but if you're careful enough just like that you can do it and it looks cool and it gives nice kind of I mean this looks slightly undead like if you were grading a zombie um, it's all kind of cool stuff but for now we'll just reset that and then if you look at the difference our grade isn't too much I would probably maybe saturate down here a little bit more and uh, maybe bring a bit more in our highlights. Now if you use Hue versus Luma, what we can do here is we can actually desaturate, or well, we're not really saturating, but mess with the luminosity of our highlights. So if you leave the kind of base color here and just kind of grab your orange, which is this highlight here, I can maybe just bring that down a little bit and get a bit more orange, or I can blow the light out a little bit more. And I think generally, that's pretty much my overall grading process. You can see it's a light grade. If you hit T here, usually I would bring it down to 75% and I would drop a noise on there too. And depending on the render, I typically don't go above 12, but in this case, I would maybe do something like eight, turn off color and uh, give it a nice more kind of grounded look. And that's kind of my whole grading process. You definitely want your grades to, you don't want people to think about them or notice them. It's uh, not going to make or break your image, and we've all kind of been in those mental states before where we're thinking about our grade, and we're like, oh, once I render this out, this is going to just look like the best image ever. And, uh, you know, because you think your grade's going to do all the work for you, and it's going to do the heavy lifting. And if your grade is heavy lifting your image, something's gone wrong somewhere. So definitely don't fall into that trap, and definitely try and let your image speak to you. You know, um, we can get into really automated habits with grading and we can always tend to do the same things. And we can have a visual style, like the way I tend to lift my shadows because I don't like them looking too deep and crunched out. But, you know, you don't want to just make all your images look blue and have a blue tint. And you could be rendering a really nice warm forest where grading that and, and making that autumn warm forest look is really going to help your image blossom. But because you're addicted to making everything look blue, you're going to yank up your blues even though there's not a single like neutral light source in your image and then it's just going to look kind of odd and kind of out of place and weird to the eye so you want to listen to your image and let your image speak to you don't contradict what your image is trying to do just go with what your image is already going for and your grades are going to come off really well because of that so if you've got a nice kind of nature scene like i said and you've got a nice kind of warm sunlight don't bring any blues into that after because it's it's not going to work. 
maybe do that if you've got a nice kind of more foggy neutral image. It's just kind of how these things go. And, you know, grading is a tool, but it doesn't have to be used like we were looking at in cinema. You can literally just do a slight grade. You know, arguably this could look better than what I've done in After Effects on my other rendered image. You can just do what I've done here and leave it and call it a day. It doesn't be have to be over the top ever. So just remember that. Now that is going to wrap up this week's tutorial. I am going to make a tutorial on these rocks and some crystals, hopefully next week. I will see you later this week for episode two of The Generalists. Please check that out if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Check out my self I store. This lot might be up there. I might just drop this one since I've used it. Um, but if not, the LUT pack will be out soon. And without further ado, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.